Hi and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Linda. I am the owner of Schmink & Riem, a special effects makeup store in the Netherlands. And for today's video, we are going to talk about working with wax for your Halloween makeup. So if you're going to work with wax, obviously you will need some wax. And my personal favorite brand of wax is the wax by Ben Nye. So Ben Nye has a few different colors of wax. This is the fair color and that matches my skin pretty well. So this is the one I personally always use for my own makeup. But if you have a darker skin, there is also a light brown and a brown you can choose from. And if you want to make stuff like bones or uh, very gory insides of wounds, you can also use the bone wax as a base for your wound. Um, you can Obviously mix these waxes to create a lighter or a darker skin tone for yourself. Uh, usually I don't really do this because I just put some alcohol activated makeup over it to uh, make it into the correct color. But just so you know, you can actually mix these waxes to create your own shade of wax. To make a wound with wax, we do not only need the wax, we also need some glue. That is what we're going to start with, creating a layer of glue to stick that wax on. We obviously need a spatula to sculpt the wound on our skin. We have some powder to powder the wax once we are finished with the design to make it easier to put paint on our skin. And for paint I have the Encore Alcohol Activated Makeup Palettes. I have two. This is the skin tone. I use it to create the outside of the wound and I have the SFX palette to create the inside of the wound. Well, once the entire wound has been colored, we also want to put some bloods in there. So for bloods, I'm a big fan of the Dark Arts Company bloods and I have a very thick blood. This is the dried matte blood gel and I have a liquid blood. This is uh, slow flow, so it's kind of a thick liquid blood in the color dark. And with a few brushes and a few sponges, we have everything we need to create our wound. When you're working with wax, it's important to understand where best to put that wax. Because wax doesn't set on the skin, it stays a soft material, it is very um, sensitive to movement. So if you put it on the area around your mouth where the skin moves a lot, probably the wax will break or get wrinkles and it doesn't look that good. So putting wax on your face is best done on areas where there is bone directly under the skin. So on your forehead head, on your nose, your cheekbones, your jawbone. I don't really like putting it on my jawbone, but it's it would probably be okay. But in this area, probably in an hour or two, the wax just doesn't look that good anymore. Uh, usually I use it to put something on my cheekbone or on my forehead or on my model's forehead or cheekbone, obviously. Uh, and if it's for a few hours or a photo shoot or something like that, it is pretty okay. Instagram looks, YouTube videos, that's all great with wax. So, so first thing we want to do is decide where we want to make that wound. And I have decided that for today's video, I'm just gonna make a small wound on my cheekbone. So that is where I'm putting a thin layer of prosade. And as you can see, it is a white liquid and you have to wait for it to become completely transparent before you can actually put the wax on it. Because if it isn't transparent, there is still uh, water in it and that doesn't help the wax from sticking to your skin. Now the glue is completely transparent, we can put the wax on the skin. So I just scooped a little bit from the jar, rolled it into a little worm and I'm sticking it to the glue. Then I have my spatula and I'm just gonna smooth it out till it's a nice layer on my skin. So it is kind of sticky. If you want to make this step easier, you can put a little bit petroleum jelly on your spatula that will help and prevent the wax from sticking to your spatula. When I start applying the wax to my skin, I'm not gonna sculpt the wound immediately. The first thing I want to do is get a layer of wax on my skin that is as large as I want the wound to be and get the edges to blend to my skin. So there is no height difference 
between my skin and the wax because if there is a height difference you can color whatever you want but you will always have a shadow and the wound will be obviously fake the better you blend that edge on your skin the better the wound will look at the end so the basic layer is done and to create a little bit of skin texture, I put my stipple sponge in the petroleum jelly and I'm just going to stipple over the wax to just give it a little bit of a texture to more match all of the pores in your skin and uh, make it disappear once it's colored. So here is the basic layer and now I'm happy with this layer, I can start sculpting the wound. So with the pointy side of the spatula, we are going to make that wound. I put a little bit of petroleum jelly on it, just to prevent the wax from sticking to my spatula. And there we go. Let's make it into an interesting wound. And I have a little bit older skin, obviously. So my skin tends to be dragged with me doing this. If you are still like 20, you don't have this problem. So I'm just gonna wiggle around that spatula until I have an interesting looking wound. So now there is petroleum jelly all on the wax and probably also on my skin and we need to remove this to make it easier to color the wound and actually make that paint stay on there we do need to get rid of that petroleum jelly so first up i'm just gonna dab it with a baby wipe just to get rid of most of the petroleum jelly and once i have that done i'm gonna continue to the color set powder i have by ben nye and i'm just gonna dab it on the wound I'm going to do this gently because I obviously do not want to destroy the wound I have just created. But really make sure that you put a right amount of powder on there. So the alcohol activated makeup or water based makeup or any makeup you are putting on your wax will stick to it. So there we have it, the wound glued to the skin and powdered and now we can continue to coloring the wound. So I like to first color the outside of the wound and then continue to the inside of the wound. So I like using the Skin Cover Up palette by Encore for this and there is an amazing color in here, this one. And that is kind of the red I have in my cheeks. If I put it on the makeup, probably the wax will already disappear. If not, I will add some of the light skin tones to make the wax match. But the first one is going to be the rosy color, just to see if that does enough to make the wax disappear on my skin. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, you might not know that many of our videos yet, but if working with alcohol activated makeup is new to you or mixing your skin tone is something you have difficulty with, uh, you should definitely check out our a YouTube video on mixing skin tones with alcohol activated makeup. I think it is a very handy video if you want to find your skin tone. It might take a while before you have it, but once you know which colors make your skin tone, it is pretty easy to replicate. So the rosy color does kind of a lot for the wax. And I think I'm going to leave it with this so i'm going to continue to the sfx palette a smaller detail brush this one is by titanic effects and i'm going to color the inside of the wound so this is actually pretty difficult for me to see because i wear glasses and i really need them at this point um, but i'm just going to follow the best I can see, so there's a little thing there, there's a little thing there, and that is a basic red 
inside of our wound. I am switching to a darker color of red just to give a little bit more depth to the inside of the wound. So I know that there will be blood in this wound and most of the coloring I'm doing at this point will be covered with blood but in my uh, opinion if someone would lose the blood that it, you put in a wound for some reason you touch it and it just goes away you still have nice coloring and the suggestion of a wound even though it would be without blood so that's why I do spend time on coloring the inside of the wound. Uh, if you use a drying blood, maybe you don't really have to uh, use that many colors on the inside of the wound. But it's also for yourself or even for your model, if you are working as an effects makeup artist, them seeing the detail you put in the wound gives them more confidence than you just putting blood in an empty, uncolored wound. And um, it doesn't take that long. I mean, you put three or four colors of red in a wound and it just looks way better. So, and there the wound is already colored on the outside and on the inside, so we can continue to the blood. So first up is the thick blood. It is the dried matte blood gel by the dark arts company and I'm using dark colors because we aren't looking for realism we are looking for Halloween makeups and uh, I think that darker colored bloods look great on Halloween makeups so my spatula is actually too big to put the blood in the wound so I'm gonna switch to the detail brush and I am going to put a little bit of that blood on the brush to put it in the wound. So what you don't want to do if you are creating a fake wound is just fill it out completely with blood. That takes away the depth you put in there and uh, it just doesn't really help with the realism. So, so I'm just quickly cleaning off my brush so we can continue to the liquid blood. So as liquid blood, we are going to work with the Slow Flow Blood by the Dark Arts Company. One of my favorite bloods. This is in the dark color. I also love the bloods by Mold Life. They have three different colors, an arterial, a venial, and an aged. And uh, they look really amazing and they taste really good as well. But I also love these. So this is the Slow Flow. It is a thick blood and it will eventually dry on the skin. And it being a slow flow blood means that it doesn't run down till your toes in two minutes, but you can really work with it and get some time before gravity grabs your blood and makes it impossible to work with it. So I put it on a brush and we are going to add it to the wound. So same as I just told you, don't fill out the entire wound with blood because then you could have better just put blood on your skin and leave it with that. So I do want a little bit of blood on the outside of the wound as well. And as this is a slow flowing blood, I need to help it where it has to go. So maybe we want a little bit out of the wound from here as well and if you don't like what you're doing you can just remove the blood again so that is pretty okay I'm gonna put a little bit on the outside of the wound just for effect and before it dries I will get my trusted baby wipe and just wipe it away most of it. And knowing when to stop and just be happy with what you created is also very important as a makeup artist because we can always keep adding to our makeup and at some point we just have to say, well, this is it and it's done. As you can see, it's pretty easy to do. I think the most important and the hardest step in putting on wax is getting that basic layer to really blend on your skin so you don't see the edges and you have a smooth transition from skin to wax. 
But once you have that on there, you can just play with the wax and make anything. We made a wound today, but you can put it on your nose to create a different shape. You can make scars with it. You can, well, basically build anything you want on your skin with wax. So uh, once you are done, you probably want to remove the wax again. To remove the wax, you will need your spatula again. So what you want to do is put your spatula just outside your wax wound and scrape it on the skin. So the wax will come from your skin and get on that spatula. So at the first step, we put prosate on our skin. And maybe once you remove the wax, you don't feel it. It doesn't feel sticky, but trust me, it is still there. And it will actually start collecting dust once you have removed that wax. And in about, well, half a day or a day, you will get kind of a black spot on your skin where you put the prosate because the glue does work and uh, it will start collecting dust. So you do really want to remove the prosade and that is something I always do with Life Wipes. This is a prosade remover. Actually it removes any makeup you want from your skin but it is on a little towel and it is very easy to use. You just wind it around your finger and start going in circles on your skin to dissolve the prosade. It also removes the alcohol activated makeup and any wax that was still left on your skin will go onto that wipe. Yes, and once all of the wax, makeup and prosade is removed, I put aside my life wipe and change to a baby wipe because the life wipe has some kind of oil on it and uh, I don't, I personally don't really like that feeling on my skin. I just quickly get rid of that oil with a baby wipe. And with that, my skin is completely clean and I have removed my makeup. So I hope you enjoyed me explaining to you some things about working with wax. If you did, don't forget to give this video the thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel in the link below if you want to stay tuned on all the videos we upload. I usually do special effects makeup videos and we also have Simone who specializes in face paints for kids and adults. So if you want to stay tuned, subscribe. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye bye!